What is up, guys? Jason Rigby, ABQ Business Podcast. I'm super pumped today because I got an email from James Clear. Now, this is on his email list. This isn't personally him sending it to me, but we all know who James Clear. If you do not, you need to pause this podcast right now and go buy a book called Atomic Habits. I know you've heard of that. Um, amazing book. It'll change the way that you motivate yourself to accomplish things that need to get done every single day. This is something that I want to make sure I word this right. We're in a developed world. We have problems in our life that we would not have if we did not have the resources and the abundance that we have sitting in the country that we're in. Any developed country, especially here in the United States, we get pissed off at little things like if our latte doesn't have the right milk in it, if it's not the right temperature, if we have to wait an extra two minutes going through the Chick-fil-A drive through whatever it may be, We're so spoiled in everything that we do that we just, in our brains, we seek comfort constantly. But guess what? Evolutionary psychology tells us this. It tells us that our brains are geared for competition. Our brains are geared for hunting, gathering, and in that process, surprises. That's why we like gambling. You guys know this. Why do we like gambling? Because of the surprise. You know where that comes from? Because when you're out foraging and and either you see an animal all of a sudden or you see this big, beautiful uh, hive that you can get honey from, which was really rare back then, that surprise motivated you. It got you excited. We love surprises, don't we? All of these things is geared to our brain of 2,500 years of evolution. And guess what happens? We don't have any of that. A lot of us don't really have that big of challenges. We work. We do what we need to do as leaders, as entrepreneurs. We come home. We watch Netflix. We drink some beer or alcohol. We fall asleep. We wake up. We do the same thing. Rinse and repeat over and over and over and over again. When we feel like doing something, we go to the movies or we go out to eat with our loved ones, our spouse, our partner, whatever it may be. And that's about it. We go on vacations and live and eat. I mean, look at us. We're not running around being chased on the savannah by cheetahs. And so this is the problem. And Jocko Willink, uh, you guys have heard me talk about that. He talks about being on the path. Like he talks about eating a little bit of ice cream. So that means he got off the path. But you need to learn to enjoy the grind. You need to learn to enjoy the process. You need to learn to enjoy solving problems, moving fast. That's what creates success. And guess what? If you learn to enjoy the journey, the process in the journey, you're in the top 0.01% of the world. Think about that. If you enjoy working out, and you go, and you're consistent, and you're disciplined, you're in the top 0.01% physically. Look at everyone. So this article is about moving fast, solving problems, and the various ways to succeed. And I, I like this because he talks about, he starts off right off the bat as the most important battles must be fought anew each day. Every single day, the battle is a new battlefield. When you wake up in the morning, you have choices to make right off the bat. You're in battle with that comfort side of your brain that wants you to do nothing, the ego part that wants you to do nothing, that wants you to lay in bed and relax and treat yourself and and have a shitty breakfast and sleep in and take your time and be late to work and just baby yourself. We've all seen kids who have gotten every single thing they've ever wanted. How do they turn out? 
And one of the things he says here, he says, exercising today does not render tomorrow's workout unnecessary. Just because you worked out today doesn't mean that you don't need to work out tomorrow. You've got to move. We have know that. They're figuring that with injuries. Physical therapy is saying, no, we don't want to keep people locked up in casts and have their arms or have their, where they're not moving them at all and the muscles are deteriorating. We need to have some type of movement, some small movement. You know, now they're pulling people out of bed right out of surgeries to get them to move. Movement, guys, generating that forward. We, we've all seen it. What happens when you, you're on that dive board? We remember this as a kid. You're on the dive board and it's kind of up high, and you just sit there and hesitate and hesitate, and everybody's like, jump, 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 and, you, and you're more afraid. If you just jump, once you jump and you're in the water, what happens? Either you belly flopped and it stings your belly, which I've done before as a kid, or, you know, I mean, or it's perfectly fine. And it's not that scary once you do it a couple times, right? It's that moving forward. If you're hesitating in something, just move forward. Now, you know, you need to, you can take a second to look at it and say, how should I move forward? I think I should, but, but don't, I don't want you to get into spending days and days and weeks and weeks deciding this. Some of you guys love to procrastinate and your ego is doing that for you to keep you in the comfort zone. You're getting off the path then. He says, learn to love the endless nature of things and life gets easier. Learn to love that this journey, until this meat suit is done, it's an endless journey. Every single day, physically, what do I need to accomplish? Mentally, what do I need to accomplish? Emotionally, what do I need to accomplish? Spiritually, what do I need to accomplish for me to be the best that I can be? Every single day. And you know what? Stress is good. Go online, read about stress. We need a certain amount of stress in our lives. That's how we perceive the stress. This is so good. They've done study on this where they took two groups. It's a lady from Stanford, and she talks about this with motivation, and um, she's a leading scientist in this. She, She took two groups of people, and she told them about the stress and how bad the stress is gonna be. They took blood work. They took, um, they, they tested them. They gave them questions. I mean, so not just in their body, but in their mind, they told them how bad it was going to be. And then the other people, the stress people, they told them how good the stress would be for them and what it would do and how it would help them accomplish. Guess what their blood work said on each one? Just off of the thought, the perceived value of what that stress was, whether it was negative or positive, changed their body. Their mind changed their body, elevated cortisol levels, blood pressure went high. On the negative, the positive, the body actually was embracing it and excited. This is your option. You have a hundred percent responsibility right now to look at that thing that you hate, that you want to do and change your mind and change your perspective. Love, learn to love the endless nature of things and life will get a ton bit easier. As far as life philosophies go, he says, the right time is right now. Lots of us would benefit from a greater bias towards action. The right time is right now. Stop procrastinating. Stop making excuses. How many of you guys tried the 75 hard? I've done it once. I failed once. Did it once. And If you haven't, you could look it up. And everybody that has done it, it's all mental. It's all you cutting yourself shortcuts, lying to yourself, saying, oh, I don't have to do this, or I can do this, or this isn't a big deal. You have to force yourself to be honest with yourself. That's the number one thing with that program. We constantly lie to ourselves to take shortcuts, and we wonder where our success is at. Have a bias toward action. Just uh, Jocko Willie talks about this default aggressive. Just be, and I'm not talking aggressive in a negative way. I'm talking move forward, go. Let's do this. Let's get the team together. Let's decide the decision. Let's make the decision. If we fail, we'll regroup and we'll come up with another plan and we'll try that. 
That's how easy it is. What, what do you need to accomplish right now that you've been putting off? Get your team together. Get those people closest to you. Maybe you need to have a conversation with your husband, your wife, your partner, whatever it may be, because you, haven't, you guys haven't made a decision that you need to make. You've been procrastinating. Get together. Say, hey, we're going to make a decision. I want to listen to you and get your input on this. What I, I, We need to make a decision right now on this. What do you think we should do? Write it all down. Get clarity. Move forward in clarity. Instead of allowing that emotion of fog and nastiness and that bleh feeling just to hover over you. He says, if you move fast, you can try more things. And if you try more things, you're likely to find something that works for you. That's the key. Massive amounts of action. Moving and going. If you walk a mile a day, seven days a week, you've walked seven miles. How many people walk seven miles in a week? You say, well, you know, I walk like two or three miles. But how consistent are you doing that? If you move fast, you can try more things. Well, I'm not a fast person. Well, why are you telling yourself that? Yes, you are. You can move quickly. You're just scared. You may not like to hear that. And I have to deal with fear constantly. I've been getting really self-aware with myself to say, oh, this is fear. Oh, this is fear, Jason. This isn't real. This is a fear bias. This is causing you not to. Why are you being fearful? Oh, well, you know, because I, I'm afraid that this may happen or this person's going to get hurt or if I, if I say this, then, you know, I'm going to exclude this person. I may have to fire this person. You know, all these fears come out. Okay, what happens if I don't do the situation? Well, we lose the account. We have 25% less revenue, whatever it may be. Oh, well, I need to act on this. And you know what happens? A lot of times the fears don't even happen. If they happen... Be prepared for them. He says, remove the branches of a thorn bush today and you'll avoid a scrape this year. But next year, you'll face the same problem again. We have such short-term problem solving nowadays. Guys, we, 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 we think just short-term. Like even our companies, we, you know, even our public companies, we think quarter by quarter by quarter. What are the earnings? What did they post? Okay, stock goes way down. Okay, next. Oh, they did well. Da, da, da. They, we don't even look. We, we just look at the numbers really quick. And we're, okay, your monthly statements. We had a great month. Why? Uh, wh- why did you have a bad month? Remove the branches of a thorn bush today and you'll avoid a scrape this year. But next year, you'll face the same problem again. Many of you have faced the same problem over and over and over again because you're not willing to take responsibility for the problem and create an action plan take response it's way easier than you think i guarantee you that and you're going to feel way better once you make the decision and you execute on it he also goes into this remove the root of the bush today and the entire plant will die some of you do that some of you are highly emotional and so when you're emotional and you make decisions you just, you know, torch everything. You're like those flamethrower guys. You just walk in there and, and then your employees are like, what the hell happened? Or, you know, Jason's in a bad mood again today. Let's, you know, watch. Your employees learn how to act around you. Don't remove the root of the bush today because then the entire plant will die. Don't shoot yourself in the foot, guys. Next, he says, are you solving problems at the branch level or the root level? Mm. Think about that. Are you solving problems at the branch level or the root level? Root level, you're going to die. Branch level, you have to prune that. It's part of it. Jesus talked about that in the Bible, how important it is to prune things so that, that it can grow. It's a natural process. And I think it's so important, guys, that we look at Every single person that we lead is depending on us making decisions. They're depending on us to be motivated. That's why we're the leader. That's why. Leadership is not something that you just get because you got a title. We all know how that works. Remember back in the old days? The British Empire was that way because of 
what your family, the ranking of your family, and, and how close you were if you were a lord, then their son, which could be a, a total screw-up, was put as a colonel or an admiral or something like that. So then they brought to the battlefield these big, huge, lavish, they had operas and monster tents and servants and china and silver, and they weren't doing any type of leading. They were just entertaining themselves out in the field. That is not the way to operate as a leader. People are depending on you. Your family's depending on you to make decisions. You're a leader in your family. You have a team, your family. Those that are around you, they're depending on you. And yes, you're going to have trial and error. Yes, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to fail. But that's how we learn, right? At least I took action and I failed. And guess what? I learned from it. I can quickly pivot because I'm quick on that. That's what I do. Oh, this isn't working. Let me do this. This isn't working. Let me do this. That's how I, that's how I do it. I move quickly. I pivot, 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 pivot. I can do that. I was going in this direction. Now I'm going to go in this direction. It's that simple. Encourage you guys. I always encourage you guys to buy books constantly. I'm reading constantly. I love it. Force yourself to read every single day, even if you don't feel like it because you're going to get something out of there. Grab your highlighter. Grab the book. Grab your Kindle. You can highlight on your Kindle. I do that all the time. Um, whatever it is, whether it's a Kindle or it's a physical book, however you like it, read. Leaders read. Get Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's a number one worldwide bestseller, and you're going to love how it's going to change your life. Joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. Thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share. And go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today. To help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.